Today I'm going to be making a video about installing a RS Nav Apple CarPlay system into my 2011 Audi S4. I'm making this because when I was researching how to install it, there weren't really a whole lot of helpful installation videos of, that really detailed how to do it correctly. First, I'm just going to start with everything that kind of you need and that would come in the kit. This right here, you will need two um, Audi VW clips in order to actually get the um, MMI and kind of radio controls as well as climate controls out. Uh, I got these on Amazon. They were about, I think, five dollars. First, you have this cable. Um, some of this will plug into the existing Audi components that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, this will plug into the actual RS Nav CarPlay module. And then there's two other cables. Uh, you have this here, which actually transmits the audio and visual, um, the actual like CarPlay visual from the RS Nav to your uh, OEM Audi screen. And then lastly, this is the wired system. So this last cord right here, this will go into the RS Nav CarPlay. And then this is just a USB that you will plug in to your phone. This is a very important thing. This is the actual RS Nav uh, module. And you just want to make sure that your model, which is right here on the left, your car model, uh, you want to go down and look at it. Uh, just for reference, A4 and S4 are the same. Um, just like a lot of things. So for my specific car, I have a 2011 Audi S4. So I'm going to be looking at the A4 one right here, 10 to 12. And here you can see the key. This will make more sense in a second. You have off, 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 on, on, on. So it shows you right here that the off position is when the key is up and the on position is down. So I have one, two, three off and four, five, six on. Now, if you just flip that right here, this will make a little bit more sense. So here you see the one, two, three are in the off position, which is up and the four, five, six are in the down position, which is on. Uh, so you just want to double check that when you're actually installing this, that your model is <laughs> having all of these correct, because if you put it all in, put it all together, and one of these is off, it may make a difference. It may make some things happen that you don't want to happen. Make it a little bit less complicated when we actually go to the car. I'm just gonna start by plugging in a few things that can go already into the RS Nav unit. These two are different, so you really cannot mess up here. There's one spot, which I'll make an important highlight, where you can mess up very easily. But right here, you just kind of go ahead and plug in, in the first two cables just so you don't have to do it once you're actually in the car. It'll make all the cables, you know, a little bit less confusing and it should work out for you. This is a 2011 Audi S4. So it has um, MMI, but it does not have Bluetooth music. It just has Bluetooth uh, for phone calls. So first, a good tip would just be, you don't need to turn on the car, but just move the uh, drive selector into D just so you have some more room to work over here and you don't you know mess up this at all so the first thing you are going to do is just use these two radio keys and you're going to input them into these little slots right here uh, I don't know about you but I never even noticed that these slots were here until you actually need to use them um, and once you have them in you're basically just going to push and this part right here will pop out. Okay, so I just push them in and then they kind of lock inwards and you just kind of use these and wiggle this whole entire thing out right here. All right. There we go, so that's the first part. It's very awkward to move this. Uh, I don't think mine has ever been taken out, so the cables are just not used to moving like this. But eventually you can get it out all the way, and then I'm just using this. I should have brought a cloth or something, but you want to put something down because this will kind of scratch things and just be very problematic. So you want to make sure you're putting something down um, so it doesn't scratch up your whole interior. The next step would be to remove this climate control piece. If you have a 
panel popper, you just want to insert it right here and kind of pop it. Uh, personally, I do not, so I'm gonna use a mixture of just pulling. Okay, I did not even have to use the knife. I just reached my hand right here with about two or three fingers and just did a swift pull. Uh, that should be enough. You can see the clips right here. Um, it's pretty easy. You really don't need a panel popper. You can just kind of lift your fingers in there and pull. And then I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with the other side. Now you can see the climate control is right here and the um, multimedia system is right here. This stuff is super finicky to work with. Um, it doesn't feel like it should be pulled and maneuvered, but trust me, it is okay to do. Um, just again, make sure you have something protecting the bottom of this piece and your uh, center console here, or else it will get all scratched up. Uh, putting your drive selector in drive rather than in park is, I, I don't see how you could do it without uh, doing that. So just make sure your emergency brake is on. And now we are going to go to the next step. Step number one, now that you actually have your two uh, controls out and all the plugs are still in, everything's still in. So the first thing we are going to be addressing is going to be this cable from the RS nav. Uh, so just to give you an overview, we are going to be kind of doing a bypass of the climate control unit using these two plugs. Um, so what is connected, you have these two massive ones and then these two smaller ones, this is what we're going to be using. Uh, so right here, you can see we have a female lead and right here is a male lead. You are going to want to be taking out this right here. So you can kind of see there is a smaller one and a larger one on the climate control unit. We don't need to do anything with this smaller one, but this larger one, which is to the right, we are going to start to unclip and then we'll input the RS nav system. To give you a tip, uh, something that took me uh, more than I want to admit to figure out is you need to, this red clip, you can kind of see because it's, it's brothers right here. This is how it starts. And this is what you need to do first before actually pulling this plug. So with a knife or something, you need to get into this little edge and then just push this way and the red clip will come and then you can use this and pull the plug out. It took a bunch of just little kind of just moving up and down and finally it came out. This red clip also popped off. All I did was just put it right back in. So now we're going to take this plug and plug the male end into the female end of the RS nav. Uh, this is gonna go into the hole that we just took that out. And then we're going to take this, which we just pulled out and put it into this. So it's basically just bypassing the factory system. It just plugged the plug that we took out from the OEM climate control into the female end of the RS nav. And it has a very rewarding click. So you'll know you got it in correctly. Now you're going to take this, the male end, and put it in right here. So you're gonna put it in right where you took out the old one. Okay, just to demonstrate, uh, we have this and we're just plugging it right back in and you'll hear that click. The next step is going to be with this large MMI uh, cable. So this is the OEM Audi uh, MMI cable. I haven't unplugged anything, but we're going to follow the same exact process that we did with this with this. So we're basically going to follow the same process. We're going to take this out. Uh, that is the male end of the OEM Audi MMI unit. And we're going to plug that into the female end. And then we're going to use the same type of bypass that we just used for the climate. And we're going to use this RS nav cable and plug this into right here. One thing to note, there is a little clip you can see right here you need to properly um lift that up in order to get this out so we can look at the rs nav one this is what we're going to be lifting up in order to get the oem one out and then you also want to take notice how flush that is because we're going to need to have the rs nav one just as flush and then push this in all the way so i just pressed down on the very bottom of this right here and then i lifted it up and now i'm just going to wiggle as it comes out okay 
there is the OEM Audi one and we're going to be plugging that in right here to the female uh, side of the RS nav. Now we're going to do the male end and this is going in to the clip that we just took out. Okay, I've finally gotten into the RS nav into the Audi OEM plug. And again, you just wanna make sure this is pretty flush. Okay, you can see it's kind of a mess right now, but we are moving on. The last step is to plug in these LVDS cables into the RS nav, and then these two will replace some stuff over here. So what is important here? You want to make sure this one, uh, you can see it's one splitting off into two. You're gonna plug in this one-sided cable into the RS nav. Okay, it's kind of a mess right here, but we are now onto the last step. We're going to use the LVDS cable, which is this. It's a one that splits off into two. So we are going to plug this one-sided uh, LVDS cable into the RS nav. Okay, now that we have this plugged in, uh, this is the very final step and the one where I think there is some confusion. Uh, so what we have here is essentially the same thing that we've been doing. We're taking out the Audi system and just doing a pass through uh, through the RS nav. So you see you have a, a female end and a male end. So here's the confusing and possible uh, part that might give some people problems. We have the yellow LVDS and the gray LVDS. We are not touching the yellow one at all. Do not take out that. Do not mess with it, nothing at all. We are taking out this gray one right here. So again, not the yellow, just the gray. All right, after a bunch of wiggling, this stuff is always harder to come out. All of these clips have been harder than I expected, but they do come out. And after a bunch of wiggling, we have this gray one out. So we are going to go ahead and plug in the gray one to the female end, which is the non-elbow joint. Um, and you just want to make sure the pins line up and you do not break anything. So we're just going to go ahead and plug these two in. Now we have these uh, plugged in. So the very final step would be to go ahead and plug this male uh, LVDS cable back into the gray spot right here. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in and then we'll talk about where to actually fit the RS nav. It's much easier if you actually put the radio controls and this whole unit back in um, before trying to fit the RS nav in there. As you can see, I slid it in right there. It's super tight. Um, everything does fit in, but it's gonna take, you know, 10 minutes-ish of just putting the radio in and then kind of maneuvering everything around. This I had to move um, a little bit and yeah, it's gonna take a little bit of uh, kind of, you know, fixing everything up and getting it in, but I put mine right there. I'm just gonna slide it a little bit back in and then go ahead and put the climate control back in. Everything is back in, radio is all back in. And just to show, uh, this can come out of the little hole right here and then I'm going to plan to uh, kind of like double side tape it right there a pretty clean look but everything's back in it functions properly um, and now I'm going to show you how to actually turn on the CarPlay so what you're going to do if you have a B8.5 you would use uh, the nav button on the steering wheel but since I have a B8 you're going to come down here and you're going to hold the nav button for around three to five seconds so I'm gonna go ahead and hold it, pressing it, and this comes up. Now you have CarPlay. So you can use this little dial right here uh, to kind of go through the sections, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug in a cord and I'll show you how it looks. Just plugged in my phone. Um, CarPlay is now active. It's super cool to see uh, an updated kind of OEM look. Uh, this is something that's not too terribly expensive and really gives an older car like mine, like a 2011, uh, just really gives it a better feel and is super cool to see modern technology um, in a 10 year old car. Uh, so you can just go ahead and use these controls right here um, and you can scroll through everything. Uh, you see 
And yeah, you can choose music. Something that's really nice is it comes with Spotify and Waze, which are definitely two things that are um, pretty essential. Go ahead, click on Spotify. Um, yeah, and then if you want to get back to the Audi system, all you do is just hit any Audi key. So I'll go ahead and hit media. And then it just goes back to the normal Audi system. Uh, you can still control everything just like normal. Uh, with the Audi system, you wouldn't even know that CarPlay is really installed, other than the fact that if you go ahead and hold Nav, it comes back to CarPlay. Uh, super cool install. I hope that was able uh, to help you through it. Um, I know I couldn't find a very good video, so I hope my video helped. Uh, like I said, I'll have the link to this exact unit in my description. And if you have any questions about the install or anything like that, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll try to get to it.